This is my iPhone XS. I bought this phone in November of 2020, so I've been using it for more than a year. And generally speaking, I like it. There are many good things about this phone. But at the same time, there are some small drawbacks and one fairly big problem, which I will get to later in this video. The design is one of the things I like about this phone. In 2022, this phone will be four years old, yet it doesn't look outdated in my opinion. This phone feels and fits very nicely in my hands. It's not too big or too small. In fact, this might just be the perfect screen size, at least for me. There are no sharp edges or corners or really anything that would make this phone uncomfortable to hold. The screen is big enough to offer a comfortable typing experience and reading text on this phone has never been a problem for me. It's also very durable with girl glass on both sides and a stainless steel frame. This thing feels like a solid brick. I have dropped this phone several times. Most of them were inside, but some were outside on solid concrete. But thankfully, it never cracked. Although I do use a slim clear case whenever I go outside, but indoors, I don't. Now, this phone also happens to be IP68 water and dust resistant. So it should be completely fine in rain, getting splashed at, or even fully submerged in water up to two meters of depth for 30 minutes. But here's a pro tip. Try not putting this phone in water on purpose because the older these phones get, the less water and dust resistant they become. And let's just say I learned this the hard way. So trust me, avoid it whenever you can. Now, I think my favorite thing about this phone has to be the screen. It's not perfect, but it's really, really good for a four-year phone and for what this phone costs right now. This is a 5.8 inch OLED screen with a resolution of 2436 by 1125 pixels, but a 1 million to one contrast ratio, support for HDR content, amazing viewing angles, a lot of contrast, accurate colors, and a peak brightness of 625 nits make this an amazing screen. These are almost all the things you would expect to see in a high-end flagship phone screen. I say almost because in 2022, I would also expect to see a high refresh rate, 120 hertz or at least 90 hertz, which this phone doesn't have. This is just a 60 hertz screen. But I always say that it doesn't matter if you're switching to this phone from a phone that also has a 60 hertz screen. Like if you're not used to seeing 120 hertz, you should be just fine. But if you are currently using a phone with 120 hertz, then it might be a bit of a problem. But what's not a problem is the brightness. This screen gets bright enough to be visible outdoors, dark enough to be usable indoors at night, and auto brightness also works very well. I don't think brightness has ever been an issue for me. I also like the overall user experience. iOS feels very smooth and responsive on this device. Only recently I've been having a few problems with iOS 15. For example, if I open any app right after closing it from the background, it immediately crashes. But I think this is just a problem with my phone for some reason, because when I was testing the iPhone 10, I didn't have this problem. So it's not something you should be worried about. Now, performing everyday tasks like calling, texting, browsing, and things like that is a piece of cake for this phone, thanks to the A12 Bionic processor, which even four years later is very powerful. I rarely play games on my phone, or at least not graphically intensive games, but whenever I do, or if you're going to, you'll be pleased to know that this phone will handle pretty much everything with ease. While playing Call of Duty on the best graphic settings and the best frame rate settings, I noticed zero frame drops, no lag, no nothing. But here's the thing, my friend, you've probably heard that with great power comes great responsibility. Or actually, this might not work very well in this situation, but what I'm trying to say is that although this phone has great performance and power, I don't think it has a good enough battery life to really take advantage of that. And this is the one big problem with this phone in my opinion. But just before we talk more about that, let's take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with literally thousands of inspiring classes for everyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Maybe you want to learn how to take great photos or edit videos on your smartphone, or maybe learn graphic designing, cooking, freelancing, time management, or maybe something else. The point is that if you have a specific skill you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. Fun fact, the first course I ever watched on Skillshare was MKBHD's course called YouTube Success and I learned a lot. But this was way before Skillshare even reached out to me, so I really do like Skillshare. It's also ad-free and new premium classes are launched every week. But what I really love about Skillshare is that most people who make these courses are really, really good at what they do. They're professionals with often years and years of experience. So that's what I think makes Skillshare so worth it. So the first 1,000 people to click the first link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium. 
premium. So check it out and join this ever-growing online learning community. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so the iPhone XS has a 2658 milliamp hour battery inside, which is honestly not a lot. Even the iPhone X has a larger battery, which is a year older than this phone. And just to give you an idea, with 78% battery health, I'll get like four hours of screen on time at best. Except I wouldn't say I'm a power user, so that's why I think the battery life isn't really good. Now, I know exactly what you guys are thinking, that this phone only has like 78% battery health. What do you expect, nine hours of screen on time? Of course you're not gonna get that. And well, you'd be right. The battery life on this phone is pretty bad. Anything below 80% isn't good. But here's the thing, if you're going to buy this phone, chances of you finding one with 100% or even like 90% battery health are very low. This is an old phone. Batteries don't last forever, they degrade over time. So the iPhone XS's you're gonna find in the used market will have like 85, 83, 80% battery health. So your battery life will be similar to mine. Unless of course you get the battery replaced, then your phone will probably last longer. But the reason why I'm still using this phone because it gets me through my day on a single charge. Most times, not always. Okay, so we talked about the battery life, but so far we haven't talked about the cameras. And if the battery was the one big problem, common sense would tell you that the cameras are not. And that's right, the cameras are great, for the most part, because let's be honest, nothing is perfect. There are some drawbacks with the cameras too, but at least no big problems, I think. For example, this phone doesn't have an ultra wide angle camera. It only has three cameras, a 12 megapixel selfie camera, and on the back, a 12 megapixel wide angle camera and a 2X telephoto camera, no ultra wide. But photos and videos from the main camera look really nice. The camera or really the software does a great job of exposing for the highlights and shadows at the same time. Photos also look sharp and detailed without looking over sharpened, which is very important. The software also does a decent job of reducing noise in low light situations. Although low light photos never look good because this phone doesn't have night mode. So at night, these cameras kind of fall apart. I would say not having night mode is probably the biggest drawback with this phone when it comes to cameras. Now the second camera, the telephoto camera, is not as good as the main camera, but it's there. You can use it if the phone lets you because sometimes when you zoom in, the phone just decides to digitally zoom in using the main camera. But the second camera is also used for portrait photos and I like the photos it takes. I prefer the zoomed in look for portrait photos, but some people don't. I think it's just personal preference. But honestly, other than that, I rarely find myself using the telephoto camera. I would trade this camera with an ultra wide any day. They're just so much more useful. Lastly, the selfie camera. And in simple words, it's actually pretty good. I don't use it a lot, but whenever I do, I find the results acceptable. So should you buy the iPhone XS in 2022? Well, I've been using this phone for a long time and I will continue to use this phone for as long as I don't feel the need to upgrade. But I will say this, if you are planning to buy this phone, I would highly, highly recommend you to first check out the iPhone XR. I reviewed that phone not too long ago and it has a surprisingly great battery life. We're talking six plus hours of screen on time, which is kind of insane for a phone that is also four years old. It's also basically the same phone as this, just missing a few features that honestly aren't even super important. So first watch a few videos about the iPhone XR and then decide if you still want to buy this phone. But if you just want a clear answer, yes or no, then I will say yes, the iPhone XS is worth buying in 2022, as long as you're okay with the mediocre battery life. But that's all for this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and I'll see you later.